today we're going to make a sculpture inspired by birds using salt dough. But first, before you watch this video, follow the link in the description to our video on how to make salt dough. Salt dough is a great, inexpensive way to make sculptures like you would using clay. You can, of course, use another dough-like material if you have it, such as clay or play-doh. The process will be a little different since different materials behave differently, but I'm sure you'll figure it out. Before we build, however, let's look at some artwork for inspiration. Check out this sculpture by the Romanian sculptor Constantin Brancusi. Here's a photo of him. This work is called Bird in Space, but it doesn't look like a bird that you might see in a tree or rooting around for food on the ground. So why then does Brancusi call it a bird? I'm going to keep the photo up here for a moment before I explain what I think so that you can form your own opinion. The wonderful, magical thing about art is that it is subject to interpretation. This means that I can think one thing, and you can think another, and we can both be right. In fact, making visual art is actually not only about the making part, using your hands, touching materials, and all of that. Visual art is also about seeing. So when you look at a piece of art that someone else has made, if you're looking at it with an open, curious mind, you are being an artist. Whoa. So, my artist friends, what do you see in this sculpture? I see many things. I see a bird swooping through the air. I see a skinny bird standing with its head up. I see a bird standing with crisscrossed feet. What do you see? This piece, like all of the pieces I'm showing today, is kept safe by the Metropolitan Museum of Art. These days, it's very easy to look at photos of artwork on the internet, but it's equally easy to forget that these are photos and not actually the artwork they depict. So I really, really, really recommend that if and when you can, you go to an art museum near you and look at some art in person. This is another work by Brancusi, except instead of just being a sculpture, this work is a photo of one of his sculptures. Whoa. He named it Golden Bird, and even though it's a black and white photo, I somehow do see it as being golden. Weird, right? What do you think about the shiny burst of light near the top? Maybe this is a bird that came from the sun. This is the American artist Barbara Hepworth with some of her sculptures. Here's another sculpture by her. Does it remind you of anything bird-like? Yeah, an egg! How can we account for the strings that run through it? Maybe we can think of these lines as pathways, showing all the directions a bird's life could go in before it is hatched from the egg. Or maybe you have another way to think about it. Finally, here's a sculpture of a bird head from New Guinea. No one knows when this was made, but by the looks of it, both in the worn-in texture of it and the style, I'd guess it's pretty old. Scholars think it might be a sculpture of the head of a cassowary, like this one. The round thing on this bird's head is called a cask. Now that we're inspired, let's get to work on a bird sculpture of our own. There are many different ways to sculpt a birdish object, and the way I'm showing is just one of these ways. If you want to do something similar to me, you are welcome too. But if you want to do something totally different, you can. I tried to take something from Brancusi, Hepworth, and the New Guinean sculpture. What elements from each of those sculptures do you want to use?
One special tip when working with salt dough is, if you need to attach an extra bit to a certain area, wet the dough you are attaching with a small amount of water. The best way to apply the water is by getting your finger a little bit wet and then rubbing it onto the dough on the side you want to attach. Remember how visual art is all about seeing? Well, you might notice that as I sculpt, I often try something, look at it, and then adjust it to get it looking how I want. Other times, I do something by accident and find that I like the way it looks and keep it. Keep your eyes on high alert as you work. You never know what you might see. If there is a part of your bird that you want to stick up or out or hold its position in some other way, like my beak, stuff something in between the parts to help it stand up. If you run out of dough but have an idea for something, I wanted to add eyes to my bird you can always borrow some dough from another part of the sculpture. Now that you're happy with the shape of your sculpture, it's time to let it dry. Depending on the water content of your salt dough and the thickness of your sculpture, this could take a while. I had to let mine dry for a whole day before it was ready for the next step. Now that your sculpture is dry, it's time to paint. I'm going to paint using lines and designs but you should feel free to paint however you want to. Depending on how quickly your paint dries, you may need to paint one side, wait, and then paint the other.
Once your bird is finished, find a place in your home to display it. Thanks for working with me today. <laughs>